Hello and welcome to Science Era. In this video, we're going to discuss DNA replication from Harper's Illustrated Biochemistry 29th edition. Let's begin. DNA replication. Literally, replication means the process of duplication in molecular biology. DNA replication is primary stage of the inheritance. Central dogma explains how DNA makes its own copies through DNA replication, which then codes for RNA in transcription and further RNA codes for the proteins by translation. So the main purpose of DNA replication is cell needs to make a copy of DNA before dividing. So each daughter cell has a complete copy of a genetic material. Three proposed models of replication are semi-conservative model, conservative model, and dispersive model. Musselson and Stahl experiment. Musselson and Stahl experiment was an experiment proof for semi-conservative DNA replication. In 1958, they conducted an experiment on E. coli, which divides in 20 minutes to study the replication of DNA. So the experiment involved N15 and N14, two isotopes of nitrogen, which can be distinguished based on their density by the centrifuge in calcium chloride. So here you can see N15, heavy nitrogen, and N14, light nitrogen, and they undergoes the um, centrifugation to uh, distinguish uh, based on their densities. Stahl cultures E. coli in a medium constituting ammonium chloride over many generations. As a result, N15, which was heavy nitrogen, was integrated into the bacterial DNA. Later, they revised the ammonium chloride medium to normal ammonium, chl uh, ammonium chloride using nitrogen N14 at a regular interval of time they took sample and checked for the density of the DNA. So what they found out, the predictions. Observations, some num uh, sample number one, after 20 minutes, the sample had bacterial DNA with an in, uh, intermediate density and sample number two after 40 minutes, the sample contained DNA with both intermediate and light density in the same proportion. So based on the observation and experimental result, Michelson and Stahl concluded that DNA molecules can replicate semi-conservatively. Semi-conservative model of DNA. DNA replication base pairing allow each strand to serve as a template for a new strand. New strand is half parent template and half new DNA. Here you can see a DNA double helix. This is the old strand sugar phosphate backbone base pairing joined by the hydrogen bonds these the yellow ones are the new strand this here you can see the nucleotide about to be added to a new strand anti-parallel strands nucleotide in dna backbones are bonded from phosphate to sugar between three and five carbons dna molecule has directions Complementary strands run in the opposite direction. So, if the DNA parent strand run in five is five to three n's direction, the complementary strand will run into the three to five n direction as given on the diagram. Bonding in DNA: strong or weak bonds. How do bonds fit the mechanism for DNA uh, copying DNA? The nucleotides in a strand of DNA are held together by phosphodiester bonds, a specific type of covalent bond. The two strands of DNA are held together by the hydrogen bond that forms between the nitrogenous bases in one strand and nitrogenous bases in the another strand. 
those are the two types of bond you will probably uh, probably be required to know for a basic biology class dna replication large team of enzymes coordinate a replication dna replication is divided into three step first one is initiation second one is elongation and the third one is termination so initiation is the preparatory step which involves the repl replication of fork formation elongation where dna synthesis begin including four further steps primary binding synthesis and leading uh, synthesis of leading and lagging strands remove primary and gap fill and proofreading then moving on to the third step termination this is the step where end of replication take place and the two daughter dna molecules are formed let's look replication first DNA exists in nucleus as a condensed compact structure to prepare DNA for replication. A series of protein aid in the unwinding and separation of DNA stranded DNA uh, double stranded DNA molecule. These proteins are required because DNA must be sing uh, must be single stranded before replication can proceed. So DNA helicases unwinds the DNA. These protein binds to the double stranded DNA and stimulate the separation of the two strands. Stabilized by the single stranded binding proteins. These proteins bind to the DNA as a tetramer and stabilizes the single stranded structure that is generated by the action of helicase. Replication is 100 times faster when these proteins are attached to the single standard DNA. DNA gyrase enzymes that prevent tangling upstream from the replication fork. These enzymes catalyzes the formation of negative supercoils that is thought to aid with the unwinding process. In addition to these proteins, several other enzymes are involved in bacterial DNA replication. Here you can see the single stranded binding protein on the double helical structure of DNA and the replication fork is formed here. Replication second step involves RNA primase. Add small section of RNA or RNA pr primer to the three end of the template DNA. Why must this be done? DNA polymerase 3 is the enzyme that builds new DNA strand can only add nucleotides to existing strands of the DNA. So primase is the requirement for a 3 hydroxyl group uh, for a free 3 hydroxyl group is fulfilled by RNA primer that are synthesized at the initiation site of these enzymes. Replication third step. Build daughter DNA strand, add new complementary bases with the help of the enzyme DNA polymerase 3. What happens is a DNA polymerase 3 attaches to the parent strand. This causes the new complementary bases to attach with the parent bases. For example, cytosine pairs with guanine, thymine pairs with adenine. Again, guanine pa pairs with cytosine and adenine pairs with thiamine. So you can remember these um, base pairs pairing as uh, ATCG. So A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. Next is a replication fourth step. Replacement of RNA primer by DNA is done by the DNA polymerase 1. Leading and lagging strand. Replication first begins on the leading strand. Leading strand synthesis happen in the direction of the replication fork opening. So helicase unwinds the parental double helix. Then molecules of the single strand binding protein stabilize the unwound template strand.
This is the direction of the growing replication fork. DNA polymerase can add new nucleotide only to the three end of an existing strand and hence can synthesize DNA in the five prime to three prime direction only. But the strand runs in opposite direction and hence the synthesis of DNA on one strand can occur continuously. This is known as the leading strand. So in this case, this strand starts from the five end and ends in the three end. And this is the leading strand. Here, DNA polymerase 3 recognize three, hydro uh, three prime hydroxyl end of the RNA primer and adds new complementary nucleotide. As the replication fork pro uh, progresses, new nucleotides are added in a continuous manner, thus generating the new strand. On the opposite strand, the DNA is synthesized in a discontinuous manner by generating a series of small fragments of DNA of new DNA in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So only in 5 prime to 3 prime direction in the small fragment. These fragments are called Okazaki fragments which are later joined to form a continuous chain of the nucleotide. This strand is known as the lagging strand since, since DNA synthesis on this strand proceeds at the lower rate. DNA ligase is an enzyme which bounds the 3' prime end of the second fragment to the 5' prime end of the first fragment. Limit of DNA polymerase 3, it can only build onto the 3 end of an existing DNA strand. So 5' prime end to 3' prime end strand is the leading strand which is the continuous strand and the lagging strand which have Okazaki fragments joined by the ligase also known as spot welder enzyme. DNA replication on the lagging strand. DNA polymerase 3 is completing synthesis of the fourth fragment when it reaches the RNA primer on the third fragment. It will dissociate, move to the replication fork and add DNA nucleotides to the 3 prime end of the fifth fragment primer. DNA polymerase 1 removes the primer from the fifth prime end of the second fragment, replacing it with DNA nucleotides that it adds one by one to the third prime, uh, three prime end of the third fragment. The replacement of the last RNA nucleotide with DNA leaves the sugar phosphate bone with three prime end so rna primer is added which built by which is built by the primase serves as starter sequence of the dna polymerase 3 however short fragments uh, or short segments called okazaki fragments are made because it can only go in a five prime to three prime direction Although new DNA strands have been synthesized, the RNA primer present a newly formed strand needs to be replaced by DNA. This activity is performed by the enzyme DNA polymerase 1 or DNA POL1. It specifically removes the RNA primer via its 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity and replace them with the new deoxyribonucleotide by the 5 prime end to the 3 prime DNA polymerase activity. This diagram shows the summary of the DNA replication. 
Helicase unwinds the parenteral double helix, then single standard binding proteins stabilize the unbound parenteral DNA. The leading strand is synthesized continuously in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction by DNA polymerase. The lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously. Primase synthesizes a short RNA primer which is extended by DNA polymerase to form a Okazaki fragments. After the RNA primer is replaced by DNA, DNA ligase joins the Okazaki fragment to the growing strand. This brings us to the end of DNA replication. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe for more.